the Zoning Board of Appeals. The first item on the agenda is a uh, call to order, and this is the call to order. And it looks like we have a full complement of board members here tonight. Second item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of our January 23, 2001 meeting. Any comments from board members on the, on the minutes? I, I do have one question. I just noticed this. Was the meeting on March 23rd or was it on January 24th? The minutes we have at the top actually show March 24. I, I'm sorry. Our minutes show January 24 at the top, but our current minutes, our current agenda shows approval of the minutes of January 23. Was it 23 or 24? I don't got a calendar. Mm -hmm. Must be 23. 24. It must be 24. The first was a Sunday, Saturday. 24. So, 24. 24. Okay. Then the minutes as written are correct with the date of January 24. Comments on the January 24, 2001 minutes? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, hearing none, the only thing that I might suggest we uh, add at the top where we list the members present, I think traditionally we've listed any absent members, and at the January meeting the only member absent was uh, Mr. Keneally. If we could just um, have the minutes reflect Mr. Keneally's absence. But with that addition, uh, could I have a motion for approval of the minutes of January 24, 2001? So moved. Second? Second. Um, all those in favor? Um, show the minutes um, approved by a vote of seven in favor, <coughs> zero opposed. Mr. Chair. Uh, Sandy Hanscom, Sander is going to be doing the minutes from now on. She's graciously accepted that position. Um, well, thank you for being willing to do that for us. We had been with the temp agency for throughout the winter, and it was substantially more than what what we wanted to pay. And uh, so we had been looking for some time for somebody to be on our own payroll, and with to no avail. And, Finally, Sandy step forward, which we really appreciate. Well, we welcome your assistance you. with the minutes, so thank you for doing that for us. Uh, next item on the agenda is old business. And the only item of old business we have on our agenda is to hear the request of Michael and Lee Wilson, 82 Two Lights Road, tax map U39, lot four for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, this matter was tabled from the January 24, 2001 hearing to permit our uh, code enforcement officer to confirm the dimensions of the accessory dwelling unit. So if we could ask uh, Mr. Smith, our CEO, to report back to us um, on that. I have not, uh, to no avail, I've been calling for a couple of weeks to get down there, um, and um, so I've, I haven't confirmed the measurements yet. And are the Wilsons here tonight? No one here on behalf of the Wilsons? Um, then I suggest that this matter not be even removed from the table at this point, unless we need to mo remove it from the table in order to table it further, if that's our desire. Or to remove it from the table and deny it. I think or to last, remove it from the table and vote on it. I think at the last meeting um, we discussed whether in fact they could even come before us because of the size of this accessory dwelling. Um, it was oversized in effect. 
So did, can we, in fact, rule on it? Can we make a determination whether we grant it or not? Well, shall, shall we remove it from the table and discuss it? And we can then either um, move to table it further or vote on it. If it's, All right, I'll make a motion the to pleasure to of the board to discuss it, then just to, to, to keep the ball, I'll make a motion to remove it from the table for further discussion. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of. Uh, removing the matter from the table for the purpose of discussion. Um, opposed? One opposed. Um, the matter is removed from the table by a vote of six in favor, one opposed. Mr. Keneally in opposition. Um, a matter of correction on the minutes. Uh, Mr. Keneally, since you weren't here in January, I think you just voted to approve them by a vote of seven to zero, correct? Um, I think you probably should have abstained. Um, can we? Uh, Sounds reasonable. Can we have the uh, vote on the approval of the minutes um, amended to reflect a vote of six in favor with one abstention? Mr. Keneally abstaining since he wasn't present. Um, back to the old business, um, the matter of the Wilsons. This was actually first <coughs> in front of us back in. November of 2000, and we tabled it at that time to our January meeting. And at the January meeting, a question arose, I think raised by Mr. Fristasi, as to whether the accessory dwelling unit met the dimension requirements, which I think was, was it 600 square feet? It's the maximum allowable uh, square footage. And the information that was presented to us at the time suggested that the dimensions actually exceeded 600 square feet. We asked Mr. Smith to uh, go to the Wilson's property and actually physically measure the dimensions for us. We would know exactly what they were. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Wilson was here at the time of the hearing. Um, and she was to arrange a time with Mr. Smith for him to be able to access the property to be able to make those measurements. I think, and to add to that, in time for this meeting. In time for this meeting, that's right. Um, so Mr. Smith, you've made uh, efforts, more than one effort, to contact the Wilsons? Within the last two weeks, yes. I hadn't contacted her before because I assumed she'd be contacting me. And then when it got down to, to a two-week window, I decided I'd better start calling her. Uh, but there was no answer. Did you try on more than one occasion? <coughs> yes, the secretaries did. Uh, did you get an answering machine? Uh, voicemail? Uh, yes, we did. And you left a message? Left a message. And no reply? No reply. I believe, I believe, they're in, they, I believe they are on vacation, and that could be why they haven't got back to me in the last couple of weeks. Well, but they were given notice, personal notice, um, of this hearing date. Um, Mrs. Wilson hasn't contacted you to request a continuance of the hearing? No. Well, our options, it would seem, would be to either table it an additional month to give them an additional opportunity, or as Mr. Fristashi has suggested, uh, to vote on it based on the information um, in front of us. I don't see any compelling reason to take this as an active piece of business. You know, there's no time pressure on us to either approve or disapprove it. So I would be in favor of retabling it to a meeting where the applicant could be here. This is a condition that has been in existence for, my recollection is, at least five years? Correct. And my point in saying that is simply that it continuing for another month without formal uh, approval of the town doesn't seem to cause any great harm. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there is, uh, the board certainly has an interest in wanting to make sure that its procedures are followed 
and to the extent that an applicant is in front of us and makes a request. Um, and as part of that request, the applicant is instructed to provide certain information to us and to make certain, or inf make certain information available, in this case, make the property available to Mr. Smith, um, and they don't do it. Um, do we want to act on the petition? or give them another opportunity. It, my feeling is in light of the five years that it's been in existence, there's no reason to, to be punitive um, and deny the application. Um, I'd suggest we maybe give them one more month. Um, and if there still isn't compliance at that time, we can take it up again. But I'm certainly willing to go with whatever the will of the board is. <coughs> I agree with that rationale. I think that it would be fair to give them another month, especially in light of the fact we know they're away. It is concerning that they requested this date. However, I think out of fairness, we should wait one more month. Other sentiments? I, I concur. I, my recollection was that they definitely couldn't make the February meeting, and they weren't sure about the March meeting. And um, my only addition would be it might be worthwhile to write them uh, in, in writing, we, we cannot uh, get someone in to make the measurements so by the next board meeting, then we'll have to we'll make action with information we have. That's a good point. That sounds reasonable to me. That is. Can we direct the code enforcement officer to send them a letter to the effect that this will be the last time we table it and that we will make a decision based on the information before us on the next, or well, the April meeting? I think that's a fair request to make. Um, we've, we've postponed this. Mr. Smith, can you uh, send them a letter um, telling them that uh, you need access to the property before the next meeting in an absence of your being granted access to do the necessary measurements that the matter will be heard in their absence based on the information that we have in our file currently? Um, can I have a motion to table this until the April 2001 meeting? So moved. Mr. Fristashi, um, second? Second. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Um, motion to table is approved by a vote of seven to zero. Seven in favor, zero opposed. with Mr. Smith to send a letter. Excuse me, wait it, a second. You've seconded the motion. Yeah. Um, Mr. Keneally. <clears throat> uh, no other items of old business being on the agenda. First item of new business is to hear the appeal of Gary and Pauline Zaleska, 548 Ocean House Road, Act <coughs> Map U16, Lot 6, for a front property line variance of 21 feet from the required 50 feet to connect the existing dwelling to the existing garage at 29 feet from the front property line. Do we have uh, Gary and Pauline Zaleska? <laughs> you didn't need to tell me that. <laughs> Um, let's see. This is a request for a variance under section 19-5-2 of the Cape Elizabeth uh, zoning ordinance, and we have the packet of materials that you have provided. Thank you for that. Um, before we start hearing evidence um, on the application, are there comments from the board on the 
uh, sufficiency of the materials that we have been provided. I'd like to comment that I wish they were all this complete. <clears throat> Express the same sentiments. I think this is one of the best prepared ones we've seen. Anything lacking that anybody would like to have available to us before we hear this? I seem to be missing uh, Exhibit C, D, and some more pertinent information, but uh, your, your, your individual packet was missing exhibit well, I, I don't uh, I don't have the information. I think that uh, I'll share and I will be, be fine with this. Okay. The only, I think the only thing I'm looking for is the, no, I see it now, driveway. Um, and the turnaround. So I'm comfortable with what, what okay. was submitted. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. and Mrs. Zaleska, would you like to proceed? Why don't, uh, why don't the two of you together <coughs> perhaps come up to the microphone, or one of you, whoever wants to be the <laughs> spokesperson, and if you would identify yourself by name and address, please, for us. Gary, Gary Zaleska, 548 Ocean House Road. Well, Mr. Zaleska, the board will consider your application and when we vote on it we will consider all of the various elements required under the ordinance for the granting of, of a variance <coughs> and there are quite a few elements and sub elements for us to consider is this basically the practical difficulty that I completed uh, those are the elements you're in essence yes it is A through E? Yes. Now, I have a question. In the packet that we received, it refers to a conforming garage that was constructed last year. That's correct. Mr. Smith, can you help us with what were the setback requirements for that garage under the ordinance? Um. From Wheeler Road, it would have, it, it was a 25 foot setback. Kettle Cove Road? Okay. It's not on the Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, from Kettle Cove. Kettle Cove. 25 feet. 25 feet. We did have a problem with the corner. If you look on exhibit, uh, well, actually it's drawing number, well, drawing number one. The difficulty was defining where the actual corner was, where Kettle Cove and Ocean House intersect. So we went to the property line, and we see the 27 and the 90 intersect. Yes. Okay, we drew a, I, I created a right angle from that point. I extended one line and then created a couple of arcs to create a right angle. Okay. 
and that put the garage to the right side of that right angle. So it wasn't, the, that, the, the garage was fronted on cattle instead of ocean. To define it as being on Kettle Cove Road. But, but the garage does meet the setback requirements? Garage meets the setbacks to cattle, yes. On that same drawing, you'll see we have a 25-foot line drawn, 25-foot setback. We also have the 50-foot setback, which is like on the back of the house. The, there's a line that indicates a 25-foot setback line. On drawing number one? Yes. It's uh, just in the front of the garage. You over, le over to the left-hand side of the drawing. The left-hand side of the drawing, you'll see it says 50-foot setback line. Two-thirds of the way out. Oh, yes. Thank you. But that doesn't continue on. It, 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 it stops short at right angles to Ocean House Road, and that's why the garage was conforming. But the, the addition isn't because it's a setback from Ocean House Road that's the problem. Well, what questions do board members have of Mr. Zaleska? Did that, did that answer your question? <coughs> yes, sir, it did. Okay. I had several questions, if I may, Mr. Zaleska. The, the present, if you get into your drive garage now, you turn on to Ocean House Road. Can you use the microphone, please? I'm, I'm sorry. To, to get into your garage now, you drive onto Kettle Cove Road, or at the end, it's no. onto 77? We, we went to the uh, EP uh, department, of the highway department, mm -hmm. and our cut used to be on Kettle Cove. In fact, when they redid the streets, we ended up with two Kettle Cove Road. But prior to that, we had gotten an approval and a permit to move the driveway to the front of the house, where you see it on the drawings, mm -hmm. where you see it on drawing number one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in since the renumbering of the houses, we went back to 548 Ocean House Road because our driveway is now on the front, and not the side. Thank you. And the second question, if I may, what I noticed on your plans is that this was a planned addition plus a garage at the same time? It, it began that way, but it's been converted to be just the addition. Okay. The garage drawings were submitted to Bruce last year when we constructed it. Thank you. By itself. <clears throat> I have a question, please. When did you complete the garage construction? When was the garage construction completed? Uh, it was completed uh, October of last year. We actually began, we had our permit, I believe in June and July. But by the time we got all the contractors together, I completed the concrete work and got the uh, roof on. It wasn't until like October, I believe. And you've owned this property for some time? Since 1997. 97? And so when you built the garage, you had plans in the future to add this addition yes. between the two. That's correct. But no application was made at that time? Last well, actually, when I had my basic construction drawings done uh, late in 99, I sat down with, uh, with Bruce, and that's when I realized that we had the 50-foot setback and not the 25-foot setback. So I realized that what we were trying to do was not according to the zoning. So that's when we decided that we really needed the garage because we were actually renting a, a rental uh, storage unit at the time. So after we figured out that we were basically on Kettle Cove Road with the garage, we built the garage with the hopes that we would go back and get a variance later to do the connector between the two. So this was in your plans uh, to some degree from the beginning. Your, your driveway is now on Ocean House, is that? We, we actually did the driveway for the new garage. Actually we, no, actually, we did the driveway before we even did the garage because we were having trouble. People coming up Kettle Cove Road, they found it as a shortcut that cut through the front of our driveway, in front of our house. <laughs> and many a times we'd find tire tracks in the front of the house. So we decided we built a, uh, 
uh, not barriers, but they're basically planting areas mm -hmm. on Kettle Cove Roadside and on the front of the house. And at that time, we changed the driveway to the front so people wouldn't be taking that shortcut. So your driveway is on Ocean House now, it's on the front and of you the house plan now. on keeping it on Ocean House? We plan on keeping it. Okay, and that's we, we got the permit to do that and with the idea of keeping it there, yes, correct. Okay. In fact, that's actually the designs the designates the house as being on Ocean House Road and not Kettle Cove Road. So you have an Ocean House address, is what we you're saying? We have 5.8, that's correct. That's what we originally had. And with the changing of the streets, they changed it to Kettle Cove. And that's when we spoke to the group that were doing the streets and had to go back to 548 with the new driveway. Do you ever see in the future plans of opening up a, a, a side drive on Kettle Cove all. to make a circle drive? Not at all. Because it's just too, too uh, much of a desire to make it a shortcut to Mr. Connor. Not for us, but for other people. In fact, we made the driveway the way it is. We can. We can drive in and turn around within the driveway so we can always drive straight out to Ocean House and not back out to it. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice on drawing one also, there's, there's quite a big turnout, turnaround area. So even if you don't go in the garage, you can drive in and back out, back into our little turnaround area and drive back out and not back out into the street. On drawing one, you also uh, have a note that you're relocating stairs. It, that is your current front door, I assume? The front door is on the front of the existing house. That's of correct. the existing, and you plan on moving the primary front door to the new addition? That's correct. It, it blends itself more with the driveway and the garage and the rest of the property. Because basically the addition the addition basically is that the 24 by 26 where it, you see the word addition written on drawing one, to the left of it, it basically connects the addition to the main house. It basically would be a new, new foyer. And to the right side is just another, basically I call it a mudroom or breezeway. It just connects the, the family room to the garage. And regarding the terrace and retaining wall in the back, it is That is to extend your backyard. Is that the primary purpose of that? Of the what, sir? The, the terrace, what you have yes. labeled in the back, a terrace and retaining wall. Yes, correct. Okay. That, that, they're basically, uh, as you, I had written, the, the land drops off to the rear. And uh, we, I, I created one small deck off the existing house, basically for a place for my wife to go out and hang clothes up. But between the addition and the garage, the terrace there basically is we need to build it up. And I prefer not to use wood because I've had wood decks before and it's just a, a maintenance problem. So by creating a retaining wall, I'll put fill in the area and have a level area uh, level with the addition in the garage. Because again, that drops off quite a bit there. In fact, if you notice before I said the alternatives of doing this was like basically to move the house back, but basically you're going into a a wetter area, and you go into an area that would require a lot of fill to do that. In fact, the original thought we had was to put a, a basement under the addition, but because of the water problems, we decided it was just uh, not a good idea. So we're just going to go with a crawl space. The intent is to use the crawl space. So, Bruce, to make sure I understand the available building envelope within the ordinance, it would be between the 25-foot setback line on the back of the property and the 50-foot setback line on the front? That's correct. <coughs> yes. <coughs> so is there, is there a way to put this addition in that area? Is, it part? is there a way to put the addition in that area between the 25-foot setback line and the 50-foot setback line? Uh, to just it would have to be behind the house to just couldn't you still put it between the garage and the house no well I mean behind the house I shouldn't say no nothing's impossible to do but uh, it didn't uh, see the house as you look at the house the back corner is where the stairways are going to the second floor so the farther you put it back 
the more difficult it is to get from the addition to the house because you're coming into the stairway instead of coming into a flat area. <clears throat> like I say, nothing's impossible, you know. We, it's just, it's very wet and it take a lot of fill. So we have to consider the, the septic system too. In fact, the first time an architect looked at this, he had place the garage on the left side of the house, but that's right where my septic system is. Well, the reason I ask, one of the things we have to look at is whether there's any other feasible alternative available I understand. to permit you to comply with the ordinance. Uh, one thing that they do mention is out of character to the neighborhood, <coughs> and my direct abutters, if you look on uh, exhibit B, which is an 8 half by 11, flash sheet of the 8 half by 11. You'll see the, as you face it, the, the building to the left. In fact, I was trying to line it up Sunday, and I can't tell within a foot if that building is close to the road or I'm close to the road. We're that close. And then. I'm not sure I know which building you're referring to. This one here. Okay, this is my immediate abutter. What, what exhibit are you, what page of your exhibit are you exhibit showing Exhibit B. Here, this one. Right, use the setbacks. Oh, the wrong one. It's a little drawing. It's in the, it's in the eight, yeah. Thank you, I was looking at the wrong thing. That's okay. No. This is my immediate abutter to the left. And our houses are perfectly lined up with the road. So it would be out of character if I moved mine back to the 50-foot line. We would, we, you know, I would be another 30 feet behind her or that house. Well, I wasn't suggesting that you pick up your house and move it. I'm just talking about where the addition is going to be put. Well, we thought of the, the possibility of putting the house within the 50-foot setback and blending the addition to that when we built the garage, but it just didn't make, it didn't seem to make sense with everything that was the topography, etc. Doesn't that drop off? <clears throat> it drops off quite substantially. Yes, it does. On one drawing, I give the elevation. I think it's drawing one again of the large drawings. The front left corner of the addition you see is zero. That's the existing elevation. We were looking at. In the front of the new garage or existing garage, it says yep. minus six, that's minus six inches. Yep. You notice the back corner of the addition is minus 41 inches. That's a, almost a four foot drop from the, the diagonal of the addition. And once you re reach that minus 40 inch, 41 inches, it does level off at that point. Mr. Fristasi. Uh, question for the applicant and one for the code enforcement officer. Um, are you going to connect your house and the garage with a full foundation and fill it in with an addition? Is that the plan? Okay. The, the house to the garage, that's, that's a full foundation wall everywhere. There would be a minimum of four feet below grade. Mm -hmm. Garage protected. So the answer is yes. Yes. Pardon? Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. Okay. And what's the distance between the house and the garage? Pardon? What's the distance between the house and the garage? Uh, 40, <coughs> 48 feet, 7 inches. Okay. 47 feet, 908. It's on drawing two. Okay. It just looked quite a, quite a ways on Exhibit B, but that's fine. That's fine. Question for the code enforcement officer. Do we, should we have any concerns with resource protection in the backyard? We, if, we, if you I have did a drive-by, and it looked 
kind of wet, and I'm he just. He has to push it back any further. We could. I'd probably ask him for what was still in age. If he got down, and if he had to go back any further than what he's what he's already at, I'd have some concerns. Yes. All right, but you're comfortable that this shouldn't be a concern at this particular time. He's within a certain setback. Yes. Right. Is this a resource one or two protection area, or? If anything, it's a two. It's a two. Setbacks two to the upland edge of two. And we can go right to the upland edge. Right. Okay, as long as you're not concerned, Bruce, I shouldn't be concerned. Other questions, board members? Have you discussed this with the immediate but abutters on your left and right and across the street? Actually, I've discussed it with all my, probably uh, on the first drawing that shows uh, Exhibit C, probably 75 or 80 percent of, yes, I, the immediate butters I have. Uh, my abutters across the street are right here, the, the Jordans. Uh, and I also <coughs> spoke to the Chapmans, uh, the Powells, the Rudders. So I, I encompass basically everyone that I, I feel I touch with my property, even though it's across the street. So the ones to the immediate left and right, it would, uh, you have discussed, and what was their response? I'm sorry? What was their response, the two individuals they, to they the had immediate no left In and fact, right? The one to my right wishes to do something similar. He wants to do something to his property. He wants to attach a garage of some sort. And Facing I, your house, the one to your right. Uh, right. It would be uh, on Exhibit B. It would be this one here. Right. In fact, he's trying. Uh, there's an empty lot next to him. There's an elderly gentleman next to that owns a house next to that owns. He would like to purchase that lot to enlarge his, his property, his home. Because he's kind of limited where he can put a garage now. And to the left? Uh, yes. Comments? I've shown Linda the drawings, and she had no problems. Her, her concern was, uh, I don't think she really realizes, and, and I didn't push it in her face, how close her house is to my land. If you'll note it in Exhibit B, mm -hmm. basically her entire driveway is on my land, mm -hmm. but I don't really have a problem with that. My concern was I have a, a design to have a new septic system put in. My concern was that I had enough room to do that without bothering the driveway, which I do. We had a company come in and do an engineering study, which we needed for the uh, septic system. And uh, they can do it within the area I have without going on our driveway or touching that. So her house is kind of very close to our side, and she has plenty of room on the other side, yet her driveway is on our side. And in fact, she, in a way, is kind of happy because we're basically we're moving the activity on our house from away from her and moving it towards the other direction. In fact, my intention is if there's a couple windows that we'd be blocking up on that side because we have no need for them. And it's the north side of the home, which house is the north side of the house. So the basic activity would be moving away from her property, again, even though she only has the eight feet. One, one thing I want to stress, too, that we've got exhibit B is that 64 feet Uh, I, I figured when I did setbacks in the neighborhood, I, I didn't measure anybody's property. I just walked around and kind of eyed it. And I was doing everything from the paved surface. And the 64 feet basically is from Ocean House Road to the front corner of my existing house. And that was created when they straightened Route 77 out. And they gave me a lot of artificial depth. It really isn't mine, but as far as vis visibility, it is, there, there's a lot of depth there. And uh, I guess it would be there as long as they don't make it <coughs> crooked again. Thank you. So your house is really only 23, 23 feet from the right of way, but 64 feet from the pavement. Is that That's right? That's exactly right. The property lines, I assume by looking on the, the zoning maps that my abutters property line lined up with mine. So they were in a similar situation that they're like Linda to the left of my property is, again, 64 feet away from the pay surface, even though her property line would be lining up with mine at 23 feet. 
Any other questions? Can I sit down? Uh, you may sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Any? I can't. All right. You would tell us your name and property address, please? Yes. My name is Gilbert Jordan, and I live at 543 Ocean House Road, which is directly across from this project that they have. And I have no problems. I think it would be a great improvement to make the area uh, nice looking and so forth, the way it's been designed. And I, knowing them, I've been following, he's been following along with me with all the projects and so forth. So I think it would be great to have a full neighbor across the street. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Anyone else who wishes to speak in favor? And seeing no one else in the room, I assume no one is here to speak in opposition to the application. Well, that will close the public comment portion um, of the hearing, uh, and we will open it up for discussion among board members. David, I, I've seen a lot of these um, applications come before us, the zoning board, and uh, a lot of them seem to be a victim of the changing um, zoning ordinances. Uh, where they've, the lot sizes and the setbacks have increased over time. This house was built, I think, in 44. And uh, the lot, uh, the zonings uh, and the setback has increased. I think we're at 80,000 square feet here, and it's limited these people as to um, changes to their property. And uh, I think that they are at a handicap. And we have received most of them favorably and granted variances and I honestly can't see that this sh is an exception and I think that uh, what he wants to do is in, in keeping with the, uh, the spirit uh, of, uh, of Cape Elizabeth. So I, uh, I'll be voting for, for the change, for the... For the um, Any other comments from board members? Um, if not, let's go to the findings. Um, first, first, could I see a, do we have a vote? Uh, all those in, well, it's the easiest way to do this. All those who support the finding that the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. Um, opposed? Um, we have six in favor, one opposed. Keep track of these. To finding number one. Um, all those in favor of the finding that a literal, literal enforcement of the ordinance uh, would cause a practical difficulty. Now, before we vote on this, um, bear in mind, and this has created issues in the past, when we're finding practical difficulty, we're actually finding a couple of things. Um, the definition of practical difficulty under the ordinance is an occasion where the strict application of the ordinance to a property precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located and results in significant economic injury to the property owner. So that definition actually encompasses another definition and that is significant economic injury. And that is defined in the ordinance as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 
of the nearest property owners. So when we, when you are voting either in favor of or in opposition to whether there would be um, a literal enforcement would cause a practical difficulty, we are drawing in both of those definitions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so that being said, um, all those in favor of a finding that a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. And opposed? None. So that is uh, found in fa uh, seven in favor, uh, zero opposed. All those in favor of a finding that the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. And that is seven in favor, zero opposed. Um, those in favor of a finding that the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. Now, again, before we vote on that, that requires a finding. Um, the ordinance requires that the zoning board consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy. Um, and it also requires that we consider the definition of undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. And that is defined as the result of a variance where the structure is larger or closer to the road or property lines than the average of the nearest 10 principal structures, or in the case of a variance request for an accessory structure, the nearest 10 accessory structures. So that's all encompassed in this one finding. So, um, all those in favor of a finding that the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. Um, a finding of seven in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, all those in favor of a finding that the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. That is found seven in favor, zero opposed. Um, all those in favor of a finding that no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. And that is also found seven in favor, zero opposed. And those in favor of a finding that the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment Finding of seven in favor, zero opposed. And um, last, um, all those in favor of a finding that the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. And Bruce, we are not in a shoreland zoning area, correct? Correct. And that is found seven in favor, zero opposed. Uh, based on those findings, Um, would someone um, either make or accept the following motion? Um, and that is, whereas four or more voting members of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals have found that the applicants, Gary and Pauline Zaleska, have established that a practical difficulty exists with respect to the applicant's property at 548 Ocean House Road in accordance with the provisions of section 19-5-2B1 of the Cape Elizabeth, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Um, and four or more voting members of the board have found that the applicant has met the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified in section 19-5-2B1 have been met. Um, 
move for an application for a variance of twenty one feet from the required fifty feet uh, to connect the existing dwelling to the existing garage at twenty nine feet from the front property line um, as specified in the application before us tonight. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Keneally. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Seconded. And we have a, a second, Mr. LaPlante. Discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion is approved. Seven in favor, zero opposed. The application is approved. That matter is concluded. Well, that was easy. <laughs> well, thank you for the very complete application that you submitted. Incidentally, I, I am on this map, too. I, I'm on Crescent View, so I, I look forward to seeing it as I go by every day. It will look great. I look forward to it. Thank you. The next item of business is to hear the request of Leslie Evans, 133 Two Lights Road, tax map U41, lot 5, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically an office slash studio. <coughs> <coughs> And seeing no one in the audience, uh, Leslie Evans is not here. Uh, Mr. Smith, can you give us any information you have on why Ms. Evans hasn't joined us tonight? She's in London. She, she's in London, England, and she did submit a letter um, to the board suggesting they, that you hear the case. Uh, I did strongly recommend that somebody be here to represent um, her in this case, whether it be her or somebody else. Uh, but they chose to write, write the letter and take the chances. And all board members should have um, in the packet that they were given tonight a letter from Leslie Evans dated March 22. And I haven't read this letter yet, so if I could just take a quick minute to read it. Okay, well, this is a request for a conditional use permit. Everybody should have had an opportunity to review the application. Is there anyone who believes that um, there are questions for Ms. Evans that would require that we table this to have her present before we consider it? 
Mr. Fristassi? Yeah, this is a little awkward, and uh, I can't recall of um, sitting at the, t at the, um, the board here and, and someone making an application and not being present to make the presentation. So I, I think that uh, it's unfair to us to make a determination. It's unfair to the applicant. There are a couple of questions that I had before I came in this evening. Um, some of them were answered uh, with the letter that was provided to us tonight. But there's still some things that I'd like to get resolved before I vote one way or the other on this. I agree. I have specific questions of the applicant that I'd like to uh, have addressed before I proceed with this. Uh, would anyone like to present a motion to table? In order to permit uh, Ms. Evans to be present at the next and I'll make meeting. a motion to table this until the next, uh, until the April meeting. Second. Um, discussion on the motion? All, the, all those in favor? Uh, the matter is tabled until the April meeting by a vote of uh, seven in favor, zero opposed. Uh, that concludes new business, communications. Do we have any communications? I don't. Do we have any announcements? I have one issue of communication. I am, will be out next month for sure and hope maybe in May um, for pregnancy-related leave of absence. So I do 30 days from now, so I will be, my due date will be next meeting, and I don't think anybody on the board or the viewing audience <laughs> would want me to be here. Is there a hospital um, room big enough to accommodate <laughs> the entire board? I, I, don't, I don't think there could be any room big enough. <laughs> but I do request that um, Mr. Smith continue to forward the correspondence to me, and I will be watching and keeping up to date. Good. Can I make a, an arrest, Bruce, a question in relationship to this? Uh, when I went to the zoning board workshop, Bruce, out in, um, what's that town out in Lake Sebago area? We had the, the workshop out there. And yeah. Rana. Was it? Yeah, no. You know, that, that workshop that the. Uh, I was playing. You went. It uh, was up in uh, Hiram, was it? South Hiram? No. Naples. The one right in the lake there. What's the name of the little town? Naples. Ma Na Naples. Oh, Naples. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they, they mentioned that both for planning boards and zoning boards, the state recommends that cities and towns have alternate, alternates, alternates to fill in on occasions just like this. Uh, but so there would be one or two alternates for each of the boards, you know, that were standbys in cases where a member that knows they cannot make the next meeting. Most boards are based on five members with a couple of alternates. Um, this board has, has chosen, or the town has chosen to have seven full members. Um, since I've been here, it's very rare that we we don't have a quorum, uh, very rare. More often than not, if you have regular members with alternates, you tend to have not have a quorum as often because the alternate signed is okay. into the meeting. So I think, from my personal standpoint, I think it works out better here okay. because you have active members. That's yeah, a question I've been meaning to ask you since that meeting, and it never yeah. really came to the front of my mind until now. Other communications? Well, Catherine, we wish you well, <laughs> and we'll miss you next month. Call us and let us know. <laughs> Can we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Meeting is adjourned. Bruce, is there a quick date for this?